For our next test, we're going to take a look at how these three types of storage volume behave with read and write happening within the NAS itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to start once again with that RAID 0 with BTRFS. We're going to make our way into it and the 20 gigabytes of files that we transferred over containing ISOs, videos, music, images, the works, we are then going to start creating multiple deposits of those files. So there's our RAID 0 with BTRFS and we can test that file size. We can look at the properties and calculate the uh, volume. It's 20.22 gigabytes. And we're going to create three copies of this folder all within the device. We're going to get the NAS to do a bunch of read write operations internally. And we're going to bench test the performance as we do it as well as do a speed test. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click here and we're going to copy this folder here test into different directories so we're going to create three directories first we're going to go there and create a folder and this folder is just going to be called test s1 we're going to call the next one text test text <laughs> test s2 and finally unimaginatively we are going to call the last one test s3 now what we're going to do is copy this folder into all three of these directories simultaneously while the NAS is in operation. And we're going to see roughly how long it takes to do that. So what I'm going to do is this time start the stopwatch first before I start this operation so we can get a better idea about the time. So three, two, one, let's go. So first things first, we're going to right click there and we're going to copy and copy to test one. So there's the uh, wrong one there. And do you know what? Because I didn't get that right first time, we're going to restart that test because I'd hate for that to make all the difference. So one, two, three, go. I'm going to right click there and do it the old fashioned way. We're going to click copy. We're going to go into that folder. We're going to click paste overwrite. And then we're going to make our way back into test two. Then we're going to go paste overwrite. And then we're going to go back and then into test three. And then we're going to do paste overwrite. We're then going to go up there, open the uh, resource monitor and up here we can see all of that transmission happening at the same time now once again it is worth highlighting we are using ssds so performance will be hugely improved compared with that of mechanical drives also it's worth remembering that because all of these operations are happening within the same disk there will be a lot more overhead and work happening at any given time. So we get the clock back open down the bottom there. We can have a look at all these operations happening. Up here, we can see all three of those copy instructions happening at once. And if we move that clock into there, we can see that the CPU utilization has leapt up quite incredibly as we would have expected with this kind of setup. So what I'm going to do is fast forward a little bit to the completion of this job. And once again, I will urge you guys to remember that this is not something, these results are not what you're going to get with traditional hard drives. This is because we're using SSDs, we want to remove mechanical performance of drives completely from the table, hence why we're using this NAS and these drives. So that if you were using traditional hard drives, performance would be slightly different. And I do recommend that you check out my comparison of all these different file formats and RAID configurations with hard drives on the videos I published last year that aren't too dissimilar to this. But we can see that the background tasks are slowly getting completed there of that 22, I believe, gigabytes of data. And we can see right there on the resource monitor that because all this is happening within NAS, there is no real network activity. The only network activity we're seeing is the overview of this happening in real time. The CPU is going nuts. The volume is at 20 odd percent and CPU utilization is pretty big indeed. So we're going to see how long it takes for it to complete all three of these jobs. OK, so the tests are drawing to a close and the copy operations are almost done. We're just going to wait for that to finish. And we're going to get our time and it's done. And that came in at 3 minutes and 32 seconds for all three of those internal operations to happen one after the other. CPU utilization was going particularly crazy there towards the end on that RAID 0 BTRFS test. So 
let's repeat the whole test once again there's all three of those uh, different versions we've created there and this time we're going to make our way into the shr btrfs once again we're going to create our folders just like we did last time so it's going to be test s1 again create those tests again test s2 and finally the last one there test s3 so there's our three test folders there's our main folder there if we look at the properties it's calculating the file size taking a fraction longer this time and it's still 20.22 and what we'll do is we'll get ready to commit that operation again so three two one go I'm gonna go there right click we're going to click copy we're gonna go into there paste over right come back there open up the next one paste over right go into the last one paste over right Gonna go there, get our performance monitor up, as well as the file transfers happening in real time. It's added all three of them, and we'll get the clock there on screen while it performs those actions. Now, if you were monitoring the speed up that I did of the previous results, you probably noticed that um, the CPU did in fact go absolutely bananas, but volume utilization did seem lower then you can see right now happening with this SHR BTRFS sort of storage area. Now, a lot of that can be put down to the fact that we were utilizing a RAID 0 in the previous test. And for those that aren't aware, a RAID 0 is when you combine all, all the available storage together. And then when you combine that storage, you end up with read and write operations happening on both disks at exactly the same time. Now, RAID 1 has a very similar uh, layout to that, but RAID 0 takes it one step further because rather than having the same data being read and written to the same disks, which can improve read speeds in a RAID 0, data can be written across multiple disks at the same time. And that's why the read and writes on a RAID 0 are typically higher. And that's also why volume utilization in this SHR um, BTRFS test is higher because the utilization of those disks is happening in a different way. The CPU utilization as well is a lot spikier this time around because the things that are being conducted are definitely um, more comprehensive. Now, we've already reached the 50% point of the previous test. Remember, the RAID 0 BTRFS test came in at 3 minutes and 32 seconds. With this one, not even at halfway yet, and it's already at 2 minutes 7. So the inherent performance differences of RAID 0 are pretty clear there, even on these SSDs. With the CPU in question in this device, this is an Intel dual-core CPU as well. This is the J3355, and it's worth highlighting. I know I mentioned it at part one of these videos, but I'll highlight it again. This is the DS620 Slim, and the laptop I'm using here was only really relevant to the first test um, when I was doing the uploads, but given that was one GBE, that's not too important, um, given that all three of these are in the same environment. But... We can see that volume utilization in this test is still pretty high. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop rabbiting now. I'm going to fast forward to the completion of this second test. Now we can see this second test drawing to a close now. It's definitely taken a noticeable degree longer. Additionally, CPU, CPU utilization has been a lot more all over the place than that of the previous test. But this test coming in at 5 minutes and 30 seconds, it's already 2 minutes longer than that of the RAID 0 BTRFS test that we did earlier on. Which once again will be kind of half expected because of the, the difference between RAID 0 and RAID 1. But it is still always good to see the performance difference between RAID 0 and RAID 1s. So with that notification on screen from one of my colleagues, we're going to have a look here and move our way into the final stage of testing. So we're going to go into here and we're going to utilize finally that RAID 1 EXT4 volume. There's our test files from earlier on. We're going to double check once again for the sake of keeping everything fair and even 22.22 gigabytes. We're going to start creating our silly named folders of test S1. Kind of wish I'd come up with something a bit punchier than that at this stage. And we're going to go for test S2. Um, put the space there, keep it accurate, you never know. And finally, we're going to 
to get the last folder there of test S3. So once again, we've got the clock there. We've got the clock reset. We're going to get ready. Three, two, one, go. So we go there, right click. We're going to copy, go into the first folder, right click, over right. Next one, right click, paste over right. Next, third one, paste over over right go back into the file format there next we're going to get the resource monitor on screen and we're going to get the conduct to those files on screen and finally the clock so what are we seeing so far well already the performance difference is definitely greater to begin with than that of the shr with btrfs this raid zero um uh, sorry this raid one with ext4 is already outperforming that of the BTRFS SHR. Whether it pans out somewhere between the two of them, it's a bit early doors to say, but straight away what I'm seeing here is a very, very warm start to this. But whether I, you know, highly unlikely it's gonna beat that RAID Zero. But rather than rabbit at you for the whole time, I think I'm gonna fast forward again in a second. Uh, we've still got some other tests to do on these drives, and I, that will probably make it into another part. As I mentioned right at the beginning of recording, um, I don't know how long these tests are gonna take, so for all I know, this has gone into two, three, or even four parts. I'll try to keep these videos to a tight 15, 20 minutes max per part. So if I have, put them into different portions and parts, I do apologize, but I'm gonna fast forward now to a latter portion of the testing when these are complete. And as the tests draw to a close on the third stage with our RAID 1 with EXT4, I'm happy to say that the RAID 1 EXT4 is incredibly similar to that of the BTR FS SHR, with that one coming in at 5.30 and this one closing in at near enough an identical 5 and 37. So seven seconds slower than that of the SHRBTRFS. We'll get that clock run there. And that has been the next stage of test. Now, what have we learned from these tests? Obviously that the RAID Zero with BTRFS was by far the fastest of the three. Um, the difference between the SHR BTRFS and the RAID 1 with EXT4, by my measurement, was only around seven seconds. And with a margin of error, with clicks and moving stuff around, I think we can kind of forgive those two differences there to say they're near enough identical. A lot of you probably came into this video thinking you already knew that, but it never hurts to get our opinions backed up and it never hurts to confirm stuff that we already know in theory. So the next stage of tests I'm gonna move into utilizing these drives and I'm gonna start those right now.